have this nut set down kind of far on the collar of the actual uh, on the actual BNC connector. Reason being is we don't want the BNC connector to push in too far. Now you got to remember you do not want any of your signals and ground leads short circuiting. That'd be really really bad. Now at this point I would just slather a whole bunch of hot glue in here. Uh, I'll do that off camera. We'll reassemble it. But even before you even go to the hot glue method, where's my multimeter? Make sure you don't have your signal and your shield shorted. So here's our shield, here's our signal. If it beeps, we're fucked. All right, it doesn't beep. It does that works, which means we have signal to signals working and shield to shield working. Now this is a really sloppy mod, but being that it's such a low frequency and the wavelength is a lot bigger than 2.4 gigahertz, this sloppy seconds job will work just fine. I'm gonna cut frame, gonna slather some hot glue in here, put it all together, and we'll get to the next radio. There we go, all nice and modded. We got a huge heaping slathering of hot glue around here. Like I said, typically I wouldn't use hot glue, but if you're a beginner and you don't really know what you're doing, hot glue is removable, epoxy isn't. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together screw by screw. One thing that really should be done though is uh, putting another ring of hot glue or even epoxy putty around the around the edge of this so it adds some strain relief because remember if you're going to be putting antennas on here you're going to have coax or larger antennas that could put a bit of stress on this and you don't want the hot glue to eventually weaken up and break off so i'm going to get to putting this one back together and finish it up it's not the prettiest mod in the world but it works it works really well um not really much like more i can say about this now you can go and design whatever antenna you want you can put uh any kind of coax into this using a BNC connector or if you go and get a BNC connector, BNC connectors are often used for um, AV equipment, high-end AV equipment. You can get expanding Gorilla Glue and some kind of metal. This is actually a, a street sweeper bristle that I coated in black nail polish so it wouldn't get all rusty and disgusting to hell. Solder the metal wire of whatever the hell you can get at whatever wavelength that you're using, let's say if you're using 467 megahertz, you'd cut this to a, a multiple wavelength, either quarter, half, three quarter, or full wave. I like using one quarter just because it's uh, not as big. You lock it into your radio, there you go. Now you have a radio that has an antenna that doesn't suck. And if you want to go directional, you can go directional. Now, let's go to the smaller one. All right, as you can see, this radio is a whole lot smaller. This is the uh, antenna that I pulled out of the, the last radio. Here's the antenna that's in this one. As you can see, it's, it's a lot smaller, which means it's going to get quite a bit less range. Now, using common sense, we can actually see where the antenna leads into. There's a very small, thin pad. We need to find a ground point. So again, using our continuity tester, we're going to go to the negative lead on let me uh, switch my leads here. We're going to go to a negative lead on the battery pack since we know radios use common ground, so this crystal should... No, what about this RF box? Yep, this little box right here has ground. There are also these little tabs right here. I don't know if you can see it really well. You see that little tab that's bent to the side? That's actually used for holding the LCD in place. We can use that. There's another one here that should work. And where's the connector? We're going to use this really, really small... SMA connector with some RG174. And what I'm planning on doing is trying to get this as close to the base as possible. But if you notice that the heat shrink of this, well, how am I going to solder to it? It's heat shrunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cable, loop it back around to the points, and big, make a really big U-turn like that. Cut off some of this plastic where the antenna goes, where this where antenna would be, and then use the mounting hardware that came with this to affix it. So uh, let's start soldering. I've gone ahead and removed this little rinky dink piece of crap antenna. And if you notice, I've cut a nice chunk of the uh, original antenna housing off so I can actually put the SMA connector in like so. Here we go. Yay, on, on frame. Now I've also spliced back some of the coax. I haven't pre tinned it yet. Now the soldering is kind of small, so I'm going to do that off frame but there's a very small point on the board where we pulled the original antenna off that this is going to go through hole, and there's a small little tab. Let me get one of my multimeter probes and, and zoom in real quick. There we go. That's much better. 
All right. Now, if you notice right here, this is actually the signal lead right there. It's a through hole, so I'm going to route the wire through there. And this little tab right here, right next to it, is a ground point. Also, this box right here is a ground point. And you see there's uh, three little holes here, also ground points, also ground points. I've confirmed this with my continuity meter, a continuity test from on my multimeter. Now, because this is so small, I'm not going to bother try doing this on frame because it's a real pain in the ass. I'm going to go ahead and solder this in, and we're going to go to the next step to this mod. There we go, mod complete. I'm just going to reframe, finish putting together. A little bit of hot glue, of course. As always, I'd recommend epoxy or epoxy putty. But if you're new to these sorts of mods and whatnot, hot glue is a very highly recommended suggestion by me because if you do make any mistakes or anything does break, you can repair it. There we go. Here's the finished mod. Honestly, didn't use any hot glue inside whatsoever. Now. You might actually have to go inside, if you notice, this is kind of splitting open a little bit. You might have to go inside with uh, some hand tools or Dremel accessories to uh, sand down the insides a bit, but pretty much, here it is. I'll zoom out, reframe up, and I'll show you what, uh, what it looks like with some antennas on it. All right, that didn't take very long, and the mods are relatively easy. Um, I didn't mention, however, I did not use my Dremel whatsoever for any of the modifications. When modding this radio, I just used a pair of wire cutters to re-engineer re -engineer the inside and the internals of the, um, of the radio for the BNC connector to fit. Now, BNC connectors, if I haven't already stated, are very easy to obtain, and uh, they're often used in high-end audio video equipment. They're very inexpensive. Now, if you get a BNC connector, you can go and get a, something called Gorilla Glue or expanding AB foam, and you can get some kind of metal of any sort and just design your antenna that is a variable wavelength, like a half wave, quarter wave, third wave, full wave. This antenna on here just so happens to, I believe, I think it's half wave for this frequency. Now, this one over here, this tiny little blue radio, this is actually an off-brand piece of crap. I do still need to do a few little minor adjustments to it to get the connector in. I didn't hot glue it in. To cut the actual stub piece off that, the, that, the, that used to house the old antenna, I just used a coping saw and chopped it off. This is housing a standard SMA jack. Again, they're very easy to obtain. They're standard amateur radio supply shops will have them. You can go online. I actually do offer supplies for both Wi-Fi and ham radio if you guys need. I dropped a whole bunch of money that I don't have to buy a whole bunch of supplies so you guys can get what you need. If you want to mod your radio and you want to get into amateur radio and ham radio in general and you want to do this mod and you need help, feel free to contact me through the forums. IRC would be better. Please don't email me directly because it's a community-based show. If you email me directly, I can only help you and the next person that has that same question that you just asked, I have to help again. So if you have any questions or comments, bring it to the forums or Come on IRC, I'm not the only person that knows about this stuff. There are a bunch of hams in IRC already and even more people that are into radio. So, any questions or comments, go to the, the forums, show notes. I'll put a bunch of links up so you have some understanding about this stuff. And hopefully this sparks your interest in getting into amateur radio in general. In later segments, I will be doing antenna design, both applicable for ham radio in the 70 centimeter band, amongst others, as well as FRS and PMR. So stay tuned.